Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Multifamily Report. I'm your host, Travis Watts. In today's episode, what we're talking about are concessions and recessions. This is a bit of a year-end recap for multifamily real estate when it comes to concessions. So let's define what concessions are. Concessions are essentially anything of value that you're going to offer potential renters to get them to sign a lease. So it could be one month free rent. It could be free utilities for three months. It could be exclusive access to certain amenities. And keeping in mind the importance here, why this is important to understand, is concessions are a leading indicator to the strength and overall healthiness, we'll say, of the property. So in other words, if a lot of concessions are being given out on a particular property, it's because potential renters coming through the door aren't signing up for leases. They're not willing to just pay that price and get nothing else. So you're going to try to entice them by saying, well, if you sign a lease today, this promo ends soon, you know, we'll give you one month free rent. In the same way, uh, to draw a parallel, it'd be like uh, the, the company Apple, you know, if they can sell their iPhones for a thousand dollars a pop and they're hitting their metrics and they're selling out and the economy's great and everything's good, then why discount them? You don't need to. But if their sales are down, they may launch a promotion campaign that gets, I don't know, $200 off an iPhone, just for example. So I wanna begin by looking at a recent article that was published by Fannie Mae. And Fannie Mae, if you're not familiar, is a federal national mortgage association. They're a government sponsored entity. They've been around since the late 1960s and they essentially guarantee loans for banks. And they do that by buying loans from banks and smaller credit unions. In this article, Fannie Mae in conjunction with RealPage Analytics show that there's fewer units offering concessions than a year ago, down from 7.9% of all units in August of 2021 to about 5.3% of all units in August of 2022. Additionally, the value of the concession being offered has declined from 8.8% in August 2021 to only 7.7% here in August 2022. So this is a positive sign, again, that shows the strength and healthiness of the asset class of multifamily apartments. Despite the pandemic, despite the labor shortages, despite inflation, despite raising interest rates, the concessions are actually going down at the same time. As always, when it comes to real estate, it's important to understand that every market is different. We are looking at national stats right now, but if we pull up various markets across the U.S., you can see markets such as Dallas, Texas, and Atlanta, Georgia have been giving less in terms of concessions compared to markets like Chicago, Illinois, and Boston, Massachusetts over the last few years. Additionally, Class A apartments, which are usually your higher end luxury, newer, little to no deferred maintenance, great location type communities that generally charge the highest rents are giving out the most in concessions, which is quite common in times of recession as people can afford less during those periods of time. So they are having to give out more concessions to make up for it. As of August 2022, Class A concessions were 8.7%, according to RealPage, which is actually still down from 9.5% in August 2021. So concessions are still in a decline overall compared to 2021. But something to keep in mind is that every asset class matters when it comes to investing in multifamily apartments. Fannie Mae goes on to say that a softening market will likely lead to rising concession rates. We expect the remarkable growth in rent levels in 2021 and 2022 to ease over the next several quarters, with modest rent declines possible for brief periods. Nevertheless, we expect demand for multifamily housing through the remainder of 2022 to remain strong. We believe ongoing job growth and continued demand for multifamily housing is unlikely to be permanently interrupted. Though with a recession likely looming, we believe there will be increased investor uncertainty in the market. To conclude, although these conditions may potentially jostle the multifamily market in the short term, with interest rates forecasted to remain relatively high, we believe that many renters by choice may be priced out of the home ownership market and continue renting. 
Such a scenario would keep rent growth in place, albeit at a more moderate pace, and may provide enough underlying demand to prevent more property owners from offering even higher levels of concessions through the end of 2023. So this is just one metric among many to be on the lookout for if you're looking to invest in multifamily real estate here this year or moving into 2023. I'm Travis Watts. If you ever have questions or want to take a deeper dive into investing in real estate, private placements in the multifamily sector, you can reach me at Travis at AshcroftCapital.com. Stay tuned for more market news and industry updates right here on Multifamily Report. Have a great week, everyone.